Hello everyone, this is Ken Quigley from Keystroke and today we're going to be doing a webinar just for resellers. So some of the slants will be geared just towards you guys, but we're gonna be talking about Link to Mail, our latest Linktivity project. So this is something um, that I've actually been planning for a little while. Um, really, really an important uh, part of our whole Linktivity ecosystem. And I'll explain to you like why, first of all, what it is and why we built it. So Linktivity, Link to Mail is basically a way for people without Outlook, okay, to have their email reliably recorded in ACT. As we know from ACT for Outlook and ACT for Mail, these are incredibly popular add-ons. So there's no question that the priority for ACT users to have a reliable audit trail of all their emails um, is high for, for most of them, okay? So there's no um, real, curiosity about the demand, the demand is there, okay? And, um, but why did we build this one? We've already got Act for Mail, we've already got um, uh, Act for Outlook. Well, Link to Mail is very different, okay? It is designed for people who don't have Outlook. It is designed for people that are Mac users, okay? Who don't have plugin support. It is designed for mobile users. Okay, it is designed for webmail users. So people that are, let me just get rid of this. People that are, um, sorry, and people that are um, using things like G Suite, using uh, browser-based emails, things like that. And then the last one, which everyone on this call is gonna relate to, are the bigger deployments. This is gonna be great for admins that don't want to install or fuss with plugins installed on every single computer, okay? We all know that it's one thing to install it, it's another thing to troubleshoot it when suddenly we're getting reports of, hey, I don't see my plugins in Outlook. Uh, you know, there's load behavior issues, what does this mean? And you know, that sucks us into support issues for a $40 product. There's none of that to worry about with Link to Mail. So let me explain how it works. Okay, um, basically you set up the accounts here and I'll be getting into this uh, in a little bit and I'll show it in greater detail. And then you download a utility over here onto one computer, okay? And you download it onto one computer and then it will, um, once you add in the API key, it will then scan you all the, um, all the accounts that you have that Okay, I think I'm gonna have to stop Slack here because I'm getting a lot of action here from my team. Okay. Sorry about that guys. Okay, so now uh, this downloads, you run it on any computer, okay? Any computer that you want um, and it doesn't need to be on the network. It doesn't need to be on a server. It doesn't need to be um, on a computer with ACT. It just needs to be on a Windows computer, one Windows computer with the internet. Obviously we don't recommend a laptop with high power management. So just a desktop, it can be a server, but it doesn't have to be, okay? And then it will run and it will scan the, uh, the mail every five minutes or whatever you set it at, okay? So let's do a quick walkthrough. So here we are we've got the main dashboard. So when you click link to mail over here, this is what you're gonna see. So the API key, okay, is what you're going to, if, if let's say that you need to move the uh, utility from one computer to another, you would reset the key, get a new key, uninstall that utility, install it on the new one, and then paste the new one here. You can see here that the regist registered machine is called Carbon, okay? And then down here is where you get the utility. Now, here's the key thing. There is nothing to configure on that utility, okay? I'm gonna show it to you in a bit, but there's nothing to configure. So the nice thing is that it could be run by anyone. It doesn't require you know, an administrator to go in. It, all of the settings, everything is done here, okay? So um, now that we're here, we're gonna go through so we see here. Here's where your subscription status will show you. I added, um, six subscriptions to my account. And you can see that three of the six, here's the three, um, are being monitored. And basically what you're doing is you're monitoring specific email accounts, 
Okay, so I've got three here. Two of them are Gmail. Okay, and it's showing that these three are being monitored. And they've got more settings here, and I'll get into that in a bit. Okay, now up here, you've got the, the web API. That will bring you over to this section here if you click that, just in case you need to do some troubleshooting. I'm going to click on that later because I've got a new feature I want to show you. Okay, and then you've got the setup guide here. So you click on here. So if you have any questions, um, you forget something from this webinar, just simply go through here. Okay, once you're familiar with that, you can dismiss this and this little um, uh, initial uh, helpful bar will go away. Okay, under help, we try to put in as much help um, in all the sections. Most of the helps are contextual, so they're relating to the area where they're surfaced. So you can click here. And in this case, we've actually set up uh, videos as well. And you can scroll down through here for the different setup sections. Okay, and as you can see, they uh, it explains everything on this screen. Okay, so let's go in to editing an account. Okay, actually, sorry, I'm going to go into the settings first. The settings are important to get into because what you're going to do is you're, when you set, you create the initial settings, which are kind of like the preferences, every account that you pick up after that is going to assume that those settings are the defaults. So, for instance, here you can see that my settings are for kqc at keystroke.ca, no inbound tracking, just outbound tracking. The SB stands for subject and body. Okay, so subject and body is my history recording preferences. Okay, and then OAuth, this isn't, this is a standard uh, SMTP account. And then these two are Gmail. So these are showing the, um, that a refresh is needed, but it really isn't because every single time it hits the account, it will refresh it again. Okay, so let's go into the settings. Now, these are gonna be your defaults. Okay, so any um, anything that you create after this is going to pick up uh, based on these defaults. Some of these are global only. So the first thing is, what's the sy uh, sync interval? So if you want your Windows utility to sync at a slower or faster interval, this is where you can set it. And that's going to be based on whatever your um, your email volume is likely to be. Okay. Um, attach. Um, mail to, to users. Of course, if you want to um, exclude that or include that, here's just a simple checkbox. Like a lot of our um, our installed plugins, we included the list of the blacklisted domains. So if I don't want to record to swiftpage.com or aol.com, then any emails that are sent out to that will be ignored and not recorded the history, okay? Another feature that we added to uh, Act for Outlook is an exclusion field. And what that means is um, you create an, ex uh, an exclusion field and you basically say whatever that value is, okay, here's the, the, you include this, select the exclusion field, and then here you put in the value. Now, why would that be useful? Well, let's say you had a field where on a contact by contact basis, you wanted to make sure that emails to that contact were never recorded. Okay, well, this is where you can do that. So there isn't a way of doing it otherwise, but this is something we set up for Act for Outlook and we made sure that this was available um, in link to mail, okay? Now below this line, these are all your global settings. Below this line are gonna be your defaults, okay? So whatever you select here, every single account you create we'll assume that this is going to be your default. Doesn't, again, like any defaults, you can change them. But here you've got incoming and outgoing. I'm personally, I'm not a big fan of incoming email because I like to have some control over what gets attached. Here is the details to record. Okay, none, subject, subject and attachments, subject, body and attachments. And the codes that you see on that grid view I showed you earlier will reflect these acronyms. So you see SB for subject and body, SA for attachments and then SBA for subject body and attachments, okay? And then the outgoing history, uh, sorry, the um, the incoming history type, you can list as email attachment, and then you can also select the outgoing history type, okay? So these are your initial uh, settings. You can click on save and close or just save if you want, uh, if you've got more work to do, okay? I'm gonna click on save and close and I'm gonna go back to this dashboard. Okay, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a, um, I'm going to go in and I'm going to edit 
this particular account up here. And I'm gonna show you here, it's automatically picked up my API settings, okay? Um, and, but you'll notice here that, well, wait a second, I've got my username, okay? Well, because you may have an administrator that goes in or you know the main act admin that goes in and sets this up for everyone. Okay, so this is where you're going to have to set up the um, the act user and their act password, and then click on test. Okay, so if you're setting this up for everyone, then you know, and this is the way that we strongly suggest it. So I see Don's on the call. Don, let's say you're working with a customer that has 10 users. Okay, you do not. And I cannot stress this enough. You do not want to have them set up 10 separate Linktivity accounts. You set up one and you set them all up in here, okay, one at a time with all of their, um, their passwords, okay? Now, the reason that you do that is because if you didn't, you would have to set up 10 individual Windows utilities, okay, which is obviously not ideal because then you'd have to have 10 dedicated computers, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this is why we've set it up so that it can all be done centrally within one account. So each individual person does not need a Linktivity account, only that initial person. Okay, so then when you set up uh, everything after that, you just get the list of, um, of names and their passwords, test the connections, go through their email settings here, test the connections, save and close, move on to the next one. You will see here as you scroll down, the email history recording, where it says record incoming, it says use global, no. If one person on your user list says, no, no, I really like that, then you can change it because the globals is just the default, just to save time because if you're setting up 10, 20, you don't wanna be you know, creating individual preferences for each and every one if you've got a company practice, okay? So here's where you put in the, um, the individual email account settings. Okay, so keep in mind that if you're doing this, that person that's doing it is gonna to need to know the act login, the act password, and each of their, their email settings. Okay, now in most cases, the email settings are going to be the same with the exception of the username and password. Okay, so that shouldn't be too secure, but just, are, understand when you explain to anyone that's gonna be setting it up, they will have to have all of this information. Now, since I'm talking to a bunch of resellers, let me ask, let me answer what I'm assuming are gonna be some predictable questions. What happens if someone changes their password on either the email or the um, uh, act? You will get alerted, okay? You're going to get um, an error message on this. So you'll be notified that this needs to be updated, okay? So just be mindful of that, that you will get that alert. Okay, so I'm just going to check one second. Vic, any questions at this point? None so far. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we've got all of this and we've created the, um, we've created this first account. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on save and close and I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna go to a, um, a Gmail account. Okay, now, here I can, I've got my own settings again, okay? Um, but this time I've picked Gmail, but I've also got Office 365. These are open auth uh, connections. The Office 365 and IMAP are completely done. I spent all of last November with our development team, um, ushering them through uh, updating every single one of our applications to support open auth, anything that had any email functionality. And the biggest pain in the butt back then was Gmail. And they have lived up to their reputation once again. Um, we completed all of the applications and everything, but now they're demanding new videos with different requirements and things like that. Bottom line is, is this, um, if you select Gmail and you put in this screen or put in this, and then you, um, you click on, um, you, you'll enter it in, okay, and click on test connection. Okay, let's go to refresh. Okay, so access granted. It does work, okay, but what I'm finding is that for new setups, initially until we get that final Google thing of approval, 
use IMAP, or if you've got the Google thing here and you want to put it in, it's going to pop up and say that it's not trusted. Okay. If you trust us, then just click um, OK or ignore. Okay. And it will, it will uh, accept it or just use IMAP for the time being. Okay. Nothing will change. It's just that um, Microsoft approved it within 24 hours. Last November, Google took like three weeks to a month. Okay, and I'm just not going to delay the product release when that's the only thing we're holding on to, and and they're nuts. Like they they actually, uh, you can tell that they're using some kind of of artificial intelligence because half the time they come back with completely irrelevant objections. My favorite was, hey, this is a WordPress plugin. You don't need anything. You don't need our approval. I had to explain to them that it wasn't a WordPress plugin. Okay, so now with that, I'm going to click on close. So. Once you've got all of that done, you've got everything set up, you're going to click on the download, okay? You're gonna grab your key here, copy API key, and let me just show you what that little utility looks like. Just type in link to mail here. Okay. Oh, here it is. Okay, so here, is the API key. It saved it um, from the previous setting, okay? But if you wanted to put it in again or put in a different one, this is where you'd paste it, but because it's already there, you're gonna click on login, okay? Now, as you can see, it's already running. You've got start, stop, restart. Other than that, there's absolutely no configurable settings here, and that is by design. We do not want people going to their servers, going to, we just want this to be uh, set it up and forget it, okay? We don't want anyone doing any kind of configurations outside of the browser configurations here with Linktivity, okay? So with that, I'm going to give you a little demo, see how this works. Okay, so I see this is running. I am going to just show you here, pull up, okay? I have got my profile here. Now this was a test that I did uh, just before the webinar. Okay, this was done at 2.18. Let me just clear this. Now this is a duplicate contact in my database. You can see that was the last one. Okay, now I'm gonna log into my Gmail and I'm going to quickly send Self. Okay, test during webinar. And I'm just going to put in 3.18 p.m. Okay, click on send. Okay, now, as I said, during the, um, like this utility is going to run in the background and it's going to do scans every five minutes. So right now, I'm not expecting for this to appear, okay? So even if I went to view and refresh, I doubt very much that it would appear. Um, it, I still got the last one. However, what I can do, and this is, I put this button in for literally no other reason than to demonstrate it and to have people, um, you know, verify that it's working. Okay, so you can click on sync now, and this will force a sync out of sequence, out of the five minute sequence, okay? I don't recommend that you do that a lot, okay? Because that can create um, duplicate histories, okay? So now we've got that. I give it a moment or two, and we click on view. Okay, so it needs another minute or so. Okay, so with that, okay, well, I'm gonna just continue on. I'll show something else while we're waiting for that. Okay, so comes that. Now, let me talk about the um, some of the commercial elements of here. Go over to link to mail. This costs $4 a month, $48 annually. Okay, it's billed annually. Um, we've got a couple of things here where if you are dealing with customers that are 
uh, planning on deploying six or more or 11 or more, then be sure to tell them to buy all the licenses up front. Okay, they don't attrit um, without activating them, so they're not going to expire. Okay, but you can get all of that. And so six or more is 5% discount, 11 or more is 10, 21 or more is 15%. This same margins um, will be carried over um, to your reseller discount as well. So you don't, um, if you want, you can either pass that on to the customer or keep that uh, for yourself as part of administration. Okay, so you got the quantity discounts. Um, one of the things that I um, I really want to emphasize to resellers is that you get a 20% recurring margin on all Linktivity products. Okay, and a lot of these can be either self-managed, whichever. If you let the customers do it, then we keep track of the original source and you'll get paid. Or you can do it exactly like Handheld Contact, where you actually manage the subscriptions yourself and buy it on margin. Okay. Any questions on the commercial side? Nothing here yet. Okay. I thought the subject of money would definitely um, pique their interest. Okay. Okay, so now um, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to, let me just select, get my agenda here. Okay, so there was a couple of other changes that I wanted to cover. Okay, and the first one, let's go back here. Now, I said that I was going to get to the API a little bit later. Um, one of the things that we discovered is that when you're in, like with Link to Quotes, it creates six fields in your database for it to write details to, okay? And what we're finding is that more and more changes to the database need to be done to support all the additional marketing features. So let's say you're using Link to Calendar, or Link to Events, Link to Forms, Link to List, and you you come up with a need where it's like, I want to track something in the database for a field that isn't available right now. So you can either exit out of all of this, okay? Or you can go to Act Web API and click on the field creator, okay? And here's where you can select the table, companies, um, products, all of that. Here's it's gonna display all the fields available. So you will know if there's, um, maybe there's a field there that will actually do the purpose. Now, this is v.1, okay? This is, a, we're gonna um, enhance this. So I just wanna emphasize if you see this um, and you click on new, you'll be able to select the table, select the field name and select the, um, the type. But we're gonna add in additional preferences, um, field lengths and uh, things like that, defaults, all of these different things, which are obviously unique to each and every field type. But I wanted to demonstrate this as, you know, the, the first iteration because, you know, it was, um, it was something that we, we kind of had a, a, an ongoing need for, okay? So with that, I'm just gonna click on cancel. Now, the moment that you click on create, it's obviously going to lock the database, okay? But you can also lock or unlock it here and then do a reload, okay? So this is something that we added. And then one of the things that we also added um, was to our link to list. Now, this was the last program that we've really done a refactoring for because we've completely rewritten every single app I'm not gonna get, go through all the different changes, but click on here. Let me just pivot over to my individual account. So what we've done here, for anyone that's not familiar with Link to List, what Link to List is, it's an integration between Act and Bright Verify. So you go over to Bright Verify, you, um, you purchase an account, get a key, enter it into the settings, okay? And then what it, this will allow you to do is scan a particular group in ACT, and um, again, this is another program that makes a schema change. It will literally create a field in your database that is a dropdown that will say, you know, email status, and it will indicate um, valid, invalid, unknown, or, you know, 
called? I think it's the, uh, there's like a catch all. Okay. And what that will do is then you, it will get updated when you're scanning this, the, uh, that group. So you select a group. Let me just click on here. Okay. Let me just edit. I have very crappy internet here. I will not share with everyone the headaches I've had trying to get it upgraded since it just is rather recent. But while I'm waiting for this to load, you'll see the change that we've done is we've created this grid here. Actually, okay, this is loaded now. Okay, so you can see the group. The group allows me to select from whatever is in the group because the API has made a connection to the database. So all the groups are available. And then you've got um, process only unverified uh, um, contacts. Basically what that means is if you have already scanned a contact and updated that email status field, then it will not scan it again because every one of those uh, Bright Verify is charging you one penny, okay? And then Verify automatically um, allows you to set a schedule. So if you were to create a new group called say new customers and it was constantly populated, then you can have this um, automatically scan on a weekly basis every single contact that's added to your database and then verified in that way it can be added to your marketing automation groups because it's had its status updated okay so any of you guys that are really supporting a lot of uh, people with their ama this is definitely um, a strong thing to to introduce and just remind them any continuing bounce rate of five percent or more uh, can risk their account so let's cover the change so I did a scan today of this particular group. You can see this, all of these stats here are new. And you can see here, I had 5,661 that were scanned. It skipped over 5,294 because they already had an email status. And then 235 were updated, okay? So now you can see, especially if you've got automated scans running, you can get your results here okay, uh, very easily. Okay, any questions? Nothing posted to the group yet. Okay, so the last thing that I wanted to show you, okay, is our single biggest product is linked to quotes, okay? If you compared the, um, you know, the dev that's gone into all of these things, um, I would say link to quotes probably has as much as all the other ones combined. Okay, so I wanted to share with you um, what we're planning in the next month. And since we have Fred here, um, I'm gonna lead off. The first thing that we're gonna be doing and we've already initiated this week is export all the strings. And by the end of this month, we hope to have all of our Linktivity products translated into French. Okay, so right now link to calendar is the only one that's completely translated. Um, we have to do this in stages. We can't like do them in a big sprint because we've got to export it, get them translated, come get them back in one product at a time. So we're hoping to knock them all down, um, you know, one uh, product at a time and get them all completed this month. But because that gives us kind of like this lurching along where it, um, you know, it gets done um, and then we have to kind of stop and start. We built in a bunch of other um, sprints as well. So the first one, and I'm just going to kind of go over here, flip over back to here. Okay, so the first one will be, and I'm just going to clear this. So imagine here I selected all my quotes and I clicked on the filter and I said, I just want to see the open ones and I click on apply. Okay, so now I get all my open quotes here. What I'll be able to do is I can click on here, 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 select all of these and I'm just going to do four of them. So right now in the program, I can either launch a merge mail and send out um, quotes to all of these people selected I can change the validity date, which means I'm going to change the date that the quote is valid to, as well as the corresponding estimated close date, okay? And, or I can just uh, disable, which means that it can no longer be accepted, um, and then we'll close the, uh, the opportunity accordingly. 
or delete, which will mean that they're not recoverable. It's just being wiped out and it won't re be reflected in any of the statistics. So why am I telling you this? I'm telling you because we're gonna add the additional features of being able to um, change the record manager. So let's say I wanted to give um, a whole bunch of quotes over to Shannon or Vic or Sylvia. I could select a bunch of quotes. I'll be able to click on a button that says, um, you know, update record manager prepared by sales cycle, okay, or stage. So the sales cycle, obviously, if I'm doing that, I'm going to have to select um, both of them at the same time, but I can change all of those and I'll be able to do those in batches. And then those changes will be reflected in ACT, everything except the prepared by, which is uh, limited to here. The next one, okay, that's probably a day's work, but the next one I'm really excited about, and we should have this done probably next week. And this is something that my team has been asking for for quite a long time. And that's the ability to send out a quote and be able to allow the customers to change the quantities. So if I send out a quote for say five ACT licenses, okay, five ACT uh, premium clouds, and a customer says, okay, well, that's great. I want either six or four, can you adjust the quote? They will be able to do that themselves, okay? And then accept it so there's less back and forth. The other thing that, one of the reasons that we haven't pushed ahead with this is because if you're like us, when we quote out licenses, there's typically a number of other things that have a commensurate quantity to them, okay? So I'm gonna send out five ACT premiums, and it's also going to include five charges for hosting, five charges um, for Orange Care, okay? So I've got ACT, hosting, and Orange Care together. So what's to stop a person from changing the quantity of Orange Care and not the other two, which isn't permitted? So what we'll be able to do, and we're gonna release this feature at the exact same time, is the ability to group them. So when you group them, it will present them all as one price and all as one quantity, okay? And then you will be able, uh, the customer will be able to change the quantity and that quantity change will ripple through the rest of the products because they're grouped. But here's something neat. Let's say that you present that option to people and um, it is for the act, it is for hosting, and it is for Orange Care. And they decide that they want to change the quantity of all of them, but they actually want to deselect one of them, okay? What they'll be able to do, because that the deselecting option is currently available, is that within the group, you will be able to deselect one particular item, remove it from the group, okay? So it, it gets removed from the group, removed from the quote, you can change the quantity of the remaining items and then accept it. Okay, so we're really excited about that because that's gonna really empower our, our sales team quite a bit, okay? And um, let's see, so we got that. And I think that is it. Anything else? Uh, any other questions? No, none that I could see unless they do them direct to you, but none in the general channel. Okay, yeah, I haven't received. Oh, here. There's a question. I got one by email because um, Olga had problems posting it. So here, uh, what happens uh, when the PC used for the link to email setup is turned off? Power outage, et cetera. Service probably stops until PC restarted, correct? Correct. So, but there's that's a that's a two-part question. So obviously a service, I mean, that, we're all resellers, so I'm not gonna explain that the service won't run on a, on a computer that's turned off. But what it will do is when it goes back on again, okay, it's going to scan back to its last watermark where it checked for the emails, okay? And then it will pick up all the emails that it's missed. Okay, does that answer the question? Yeah. So you're not gonna lose the histories while it's turned off. It's not gonna record the histories while it's turned off, but you're not gonna lose the histories once it gets turned back on again it will go back and um, and catch it. Yep, no further questions, Ken. Okay, um, perfect. If that is the case, boy, we got done at 335. That's 
pretty darn good. So guys, this was released on Monday. We're going to do the the um, the end user webinar next week. So just be mindful, um, you know, check for that. Um, please go to linktivity.net, review all the different um, features so that you can kind of get your arguments together. Um, I've covered all the different talking points here, okay? No history di uh, duplication because it's, it's being recorded, okay? Um, only once using this. Um, easy to manage and license users. The more you buy, the more you save. Um, all the different configurable options, great for larger groups, um, great for people that, you know, how many times do we, you know, have to, you know, deal with people that, you know, we've got Mac users in the mix and we really don't have an answer for them. Now we do. Okay. And even sometimes if it's just to address those or, you know, what I'm finding is the bigger issue is, are the G Suite customers, the people that are totally entrenched in G Suite and we don't really have an option for them because they're not using Outlook. So now we do. So familiar, uh, familiarize yourself with all the talking points. Here is the, um, the link to mail setup and how it works. Here are some screenshots, most of which you guys uh, can get now. And that is it. Okay. So thank you very much for your time. We got a fair bit covered in 37 minutes, so that's great. Um, I'll let everyone get back to their day. And I will send out the, um, um, the recording to people that registered uh, in the next 24 hours. So, so thank you again. Have a great day. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.